Whenever we have a set of things, whether that be a set of numbers or a set of things you should do after you graduate from college, sometimes it's helpful to describe these sets either by ordering or grouping them. Soren's Lemma and the Well-Ordering Theorem in some sense guarantee our ability to do so for any set. But before we get there, we should talk about the ways you could relate things in your set. We'll start with groupings first. We can put things into at most one group and break our set into smaller non-intersecting sets. This is called a partition, and it induces what is called an equivalence relation. We're not gonna go through all the properties of an equivalence relation in this video, but just to stretch the mind a bit before we move on, notice that the equality of an equivalence relation does not have to be the identity equality that we are all used to. For example, take the integers and break them up into the even and odd integers. Essentially, this partition equates even numbers to other even numbers and odd numbers to other odd numbers. So two is equal to 1008, and negative 5 is equal to 11. In fact, this is the equivalence relation given by comparing remainders after dividing by 2, otherwise known as equivalence module 2. All the evens have remainder 0 after dividing by 2, and all the odds have remainder 1 after dividing by 2. Now let's move on to orderings. The tool we will talk about are partial orderings and total orderings. Let's let A, B, and C be in our set A. A partial ordering has three properties. It is 1. Reflexive, meaning that everything in the set is related to itself. 2. Antisymmetric, if A is related to B and B is related to A, then A equals B. And lastly, 3. It is transitive, that is, if A is related to B and B is related to C, then A is related to C. A partial ordering is called a total ordering if every two elements of the set can be related in some way. Let's look at an example. So if we take the set of A, B, and C, and we take all subsets of that set, also called the power set, set inclusion is a partial ordering, but not necessarily a total ordering. This can be proven in general for any power set, but we will show it here for our particular case. To show that it's a partial ordering, we can just draw what is called a Hasse diagram. A Hasse diagram is a directed graph where each element of our set is a vertex, and an edge goes from an element x to an element y if x is related to y, and there's nothing z that can be placed between the relation of x and y. Every path that obeys the direction of the edges gives a totally ordered subset of our set, known as a chain. So for example, if we start at the bottom of the Hasse diagram, the empty set is a subset of the set containing c, which is a subset of the set containing a and C, which is a subset of the entire set A. And so the set of the set A, the set A and C, and the set A is a totally ordered subset of the power set. Since there is more than one chain in the Hasse diagram for the power set of A, it follows that not everything is comparable. For instance, the set of A and the set of B are not comparable as there is no chain that contains both of them. So the relation is not a total ordering. It is a short exercise to see that the transitive, antisymmetric, and reflexive properties are all presented by the Hasse diagram as well. If you're not convinced, now would be a good time to stop and think about it before continuing on. Now that we're a bit comfortable with orderings, we can begin to talk about Zorn's lemma, which could be stated as follows. Let P be a partially ordered set such that every chain in P has an upper bound in P. Then the set P contains at least one maximal element. Here, maximal just means that there's nothing larger in the sense of the ordering imposed on P. Before we continue with the sketch of the proof, there is one tool that is required, the ordinals. The ordinals are a generalization of the natural numbers, so we have 1, 2, and 3, all the way up to omega, which is the symbol that denotes the size of the natural numbers. After omega, we just continue counting as usual, omega plus 1, omega plus 2, omega plus 3, and so forth. First, this collection is well-ordered, which just means that there is a least element for every collection of ordinals. And second, that there are more ordinals than there can be elements in any set, because there is an ordinal for every possible size of a set. These two facts about ordinals allow us to show Zorn's lemma by contradiction, using Hasse diagrams. Suppose that P is a partially ordered set such that each chain has an upper bound, and suppose that there is no maximal element. 
For each chain we can find an element and then choose an element that is bigger because there is no maximal element. However, this is where we encounter a problem. We should be able to go on finding bigger and bigger elements forever. And these elements are ordered so there are the same number of them as there are ordinals. In other words, since there are more ordinals than there are elements of a set, our set P cannot possibly be a set. It's just too big. And that's a contradiction. Therefore, we will reach a point where there is not something larger in P. And by definition, we will have a maximal element. Therefore, Zorn's lemma holds by contradiction. The proof we went through, or sketch of a proof that we just went through, used a lot of different weird technical mathematical notions from set theory. The ordinals probably being the most mind-bending, but it also used choice, which is an axiom that can cause quite the stir in intuition. However, the mental stretch of Zorn's lemma doesn't end here. Zorn's lemma can be used to show the following theorem. For every set x, there exists a well-ordering on x. This is otherwise known as the well-ordering theorem. It seems like a simple statement, but it's incredibly hard to think about for sets with lots of stuff in them. Remember that a well-ordering means that every subset of your set x has a least element. So what happens with the real numbers? We have a notion of a total ordering on the real numbers less than or equal to, but this ordering is not a well ordering because open intervals would not have least elements. In fact, even though this theorem grants the existence of a well ordering on the real numbers, it has been shown that this ordering cannot be defined in a set theoretic sense. A bit unsatisfying, but that's really all we have for this video. I know I've been gone for a while and I'll kind of not be around that much during the holidays either, but I was just really happy that I was able to get this out before the new year. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe for more math videos at some point in the future. And as always, I am Nathan, this is Chalk, and I will see you next time.